Ghostbusters? Good morning. Good morning. Who here knows what a spirit animal is? A spirit animal? Does anybody want to tell, like, explain what they think that is? Yes. They're a, a sacred, they represent a sacred um, totem or a symbol of who you are. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Yeah, so basically what I was going to say is they're, they're meant to be, um, they're seen as like a spirit or a guide to help someone through their journey in life. Um, sometimes they can embody characteristics that you already have or something maybe that you're working on. Does anybody want to share what their spirit animal is? Yes. Eeyore. Eeyore. <laughs> <laughs> the first time they said your, and I was like, what? Eeyore. <laughs> that is great. Uh, not what I was expecting. But yeah. So uh, oftentimes the spirit animal will embody like strength or fierceness or something that like really speaks to that person or is a part of who they are. Um, so mine is a duck. <laughs> um, so I met my spirit duck, as I call her, her name is Ralphie, um, on a super cold night in November of 2014. It was one of those days where the day before was in the 30s to 40s, so decently warm, and then overnight the temperature plummeted and it was below zero. So I took my dogs out for a quick walk around the block, and as I was coming back, they spooked something up out of our front yard. It flew into the side of our house and then fell. And I was like, okay, what's going on? So I tossed my dogs inside and I went to investigate to see what this thing was. As it got close, it kind of flew, sort of wobbled, did this weird thing, got up and over our fence into our backyard. I ran around to the backyard and then played hide and seek with it for a while before I finally cornered it in a rose bush that was right next to our house. When I got there and I finally got a chance to look at it, I picked it up and I saw that it was this tiny duck. She was, she looked like a female mallard, but maybe half the size, literally like this big. Um, the first thing I noticed is that she had almost no life left in her. She had fought to get away from me that whole time, and by the time I caught her, she had completely given up. I used that to my advantage though, so I unfolded both of her wings. <laughs> Not in a creepy way. <laughs> without her fighting me, and I noticed that she was completely covered in ice. So I figured, okay, something is going on here. Um, I knew that I had a jacket in my garage, so I ran and grabbed it, and I wrapped her up in my jacket, and then I held on to her, and then I took her inside and um, threw a towel in the dryer so that she could warm up gradually so I wasn't like shocking her system. Um, I don't actually have any experience as a wildlife rehabilitator, but I do, <laughs> I do have a, a sister-in-law who is, who is one in western New York, so I have some idea of what to do. Um, so while I'm trying to warm her up, I called all of the local resources I could find. Um, there's, an, there's a wildlife center out in Ellicott, Colorado, and there's a woman who rehabs birds that's down south, and I was trying to call all of them to no avail. No one was, no one was returning my calls or, or answering. So. Meanwhile, I put this tiny little duck in this milk crate that I had, randomly, and put a giant book on top of it and shoved her in front of the heater as she was warming up um, so that I could research what to do with this wild duck. Eventually, I did get a call back from the Ellicott Wildlife Rehab Center, and the man that I spoke to um, suggested, like, you know, if, if she looks okay, there's no broken bones sticking out, she's not bleeding, she's not, she's, she looks physically okay. You can take her to, like, you, you need to keep her overnight, and then you can take her to um, the Memorial Lake, or pond, whatever that is, Memorial Lake, yeah, uh, and drop her off there in the morning. So I was like, okay, I'm going to keep this duck in my house overnight with my two dogs. This is interesting. Um, so here's where it gets kind of fun. So I, uh, I, have a t I have put a towel, and I put a bowl of water in her crate with her. And um, the great part was during... <laughs> This is when I knew that she was going to be okay, because she puffed up really big, and she started hissing at me and actually, like, <laughs> trying to bite my hand, because she has her teeth, so it's really, it was really just adorable, even though she was trying to tell me to stay away. Um, so I knew she was going to be okay at that point. I took her in the basement, and I left her in the, in the bathroom overnight, where she was going to be safe and quiet and away from the dogs. And in the morning when I came, went downstairs, she was wide awake and ready to go. So. Once it warmed up, I drove over to Memorial Lake, and I took her out, and as soon as I took the, the bulk off the top of the crate, she was gone. She flew right away into the water and swam off happily with, to, join the, to join the other ducks. Um, so like, that was a, this super profound 
feeling mm -hmm. for me. I don't really know how to describe it, but seeing her go from this like mostly dead animal to wide awake, alert, happy, and flying off was something that like really impacted me. The most interesting part of this whole story, though, is that um, when I talked to the wildlife re rehabber, he asked me if I lived near any bodies of water, a pond or a creek or a stream or something, and we don't, like, at all. The, the nearest body of water is maybe Memorial Lake, and that's probably a couple miles away from our house. Otherwise, there's a stream that's maybe half a mile away, but there's no reason that a wayward frozen duck would have landed in our yard just because. Mm. I, I do actually think that there is a reason. I don't think that it was just a random circumstance. Um, because a, about a week later, I had already had um, an intensive schedule with my therapist where we would do a deep dive into my past, into my traumas and, and history and childhood and all this stuff. And um, it's supposed to be like the beginning of like healing. And so I really think that that had something to do with it. Because later that week, I Googled what an encounter with a duck means. And... <laughs> brought up some weird things, but <laughs> one of the, the best articles that I read was that it can mean a major change in life is coming. And I really think that that is what happened from this experience. So, two years later, I got a tattoo of a duck. Oh. She was a blue-winged teal, um, which if you were familiar, they are very small ducks. This is not an exact representation of it. They're not that those colors. We did kind of an artistic style. <laughs> um, but that duck had such an impact on my life. She really taught me that... Um, to accept help and give help when needed, and that, um, oh, what is the last part? <laughs> <laughs> uh, and that gentleness goes a long way in life. Uh, Thank you, Matt.